From the St. Louis Public Radio Newsroom, this is The Gateway. It's Thursday, August 1st. I'm Abby Larico. Yes, it's already August, which means Missouri's primary election is now just days away, on the 6th. So after the news, it's an election preview double feature. In Missouri's sprawling 6th District, U.S. Congressman Sam Graves has represented voters for more than two decades. He's heavily favored to retain his seat this year, even as some critics say he's lost touch with the district over the years. Some of the people I've talked to, they just want somebody that will answer them. You know, even if they don't like the answer, they don't want to be ignored. And they feel like they're being ignored right now. And Missouri's first congressional district Democratic primary could determine what type of political leadership takes hold throughout the St. Louis region. We won't let other people dictate what St. Louis is there you go. and who yeah. St. Louis is. Yeah. We right. make St. Louis. St. Louis Public Radio's Jason Rosenbaum breaks down the high stakes race between Congresswoman Cori Bush and St. Louis County Prosecutor Wesley Bell. That's all coming up on The Gateway. The St. Louis Police Department has released videos from a 2022 school shooting that killed two people and injured seven others. St. Louis Public Radio's Rachel Littman details what they show. The 12 minutes of footage come from school security cameras and the body-worn camera of a responding officer. They show that the suspect, a 19-year-old graduate of Central Visual and Performing Arts High School, shot out a door to gain access and moved without urgency through the building. The suspect encountered several unarmed guards in the 20 minutes before he was killed by police. Major Janice Boxtruck, who helped oversee the investigation, says those guards retreated but stayed in the building. They tracked the movements of the armed suspect. They radioed this information in, all the while alerting students and staff. The district has spent millions on security upgrades since the shooting, but decided against arming all of its guards. I'm Rachel Lippman, St. Louis Public Radio. A national school safety expert says it's hard to determine the success or failure of the police response to that CVPA high school shooting based on the new video released. After watching it, Ken Trump of National School Safety and Security Services says it's challenging to take a few minutes of footage and make conclusions. Oftentimes the facts and merits of each situation vary case to case. Many other elements will go into determining the appropriateness, the lessons learned, whether things could have been done better or if they were done as best possible. He says the footage does show St. Louis police made a concerted effort to directly engage the shooter, which experts consider best practice. He also noted the school hallways were relatively empty. If they hadn't been, this shooting could have been much worse. A Missouri couple has filed a lawsuit against deli meat company Boar's Head Provisions and grocery chain Schnucks, accusing them of knowingly selling contaminated meats. The lawsuit was filed July 26th in St. Louis County Circuit Court. It comes in the midst of a listeria outbreak linked to Boar's Head products that has killed two people and sickened others across 13 states. The lawsuit claims that 88-year-old Sue Fleming contracted a life-threatening listeria infection after eating Boar's Head brand liverwurst purchased at a Schnook store in June. Ryan Osterholm is an attorney at OFT Food Safety and Injury Lawyers, the firm representing the couple. You know, ultimately, Sue was was very, very close to dying. Um, she was hospitalized for quite some time, and she was also, um, you know, had to, had to go to a rehab facility. This was was preventable. The Boar's Head recall was expanded this week to include an additional 71 products. The USDA is projecting the recall to impact 7 million pounds of food. Could tiny forests help prevent flooding in St. Louis County? Some University City residents hope so. St. Louis Public Radio's Kate Grumke reports on an idea that's found success abroad. When the 2022 flash flood inundated University City, Don Fitz's basement filled with more than seven feet of water. Now Fitz is the chair of his neighborhood association's flood task force. He says we need natural solutions, as experts say climate change is making heavy rainfall and floods more common. One remedy could be tiny forests. What we need to do now, I believe, is to renaturalize the river de Pere as much as possible to make the land be able to soak up water. The University City Green Practices Commission is hoping to create a pilot tiny forest next to the River de Pere near Olive Boulevard. I'm Kate Grumke, St. Louis Public Radio.
The St. Louis Symphony Orchestra's chorus has a new leader, just the third director in the chorus's nearly 50-year history. As St. Louis Public Radio's Jeremy Goodwin reports, Aaron Freeman comes to St. Louis after leading ensembles in the Washington, D.C. area. The symphony has been looking for a chorus leader since Amy Kaiser retired in 2022, after 27 years at the helm. New director Aaron Freeman is artistic director for the City Choir of Washington, D.C. and principal conductor of the Richmond Ballet. She'll continue in those roles. In St. Louis, Freeman wants to uphold artistic standards without the sharp-elbowed approach other leaders sometimes take. You can have the highest level of musical excellence within a supportive and kind and uplifting community. And you do not need to compromise on either in order to have both. This season, the chorus will perform Mozart's Requiem, Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, and Edvard Grieg's Pier Gint. I'm Jeremy Goodwin, St. Louis Public Radio. U.S. Congressman Sam Graves has represented Missouri's 6th District for more than two decades. With little real competition in the August 6th primary, he's poised to retain his seat this year, despite his perceived disconnection from constituents. The Midwest Newsroom's Kayvon Mansuri talked with voters and politicians in the district to find out if this even matters. Hannibal's historic Main Street fills with buses full of tourists as they arrive in Mark Twain's hometown. Businesses along the Strip open their doors on the cooler-than-usual July day. Lines form at the coffee and ice cream shops. So a small business. We've been uh, you know, catering to the visitors of Hannibal now for 24 years here. That's Frank North. He and his wife own Becky's Old Fashioned Ice Cream Parlor and Emporium. They named the business after the character Becky Thatcher from The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. Hannibal is part of Missouri's 6th Congressional District, which essentially covers the northern third of the state. It includes 37 counties, many of them with shrinking populations. North says what the voters in the district want is simple. Afford gasoline, groceries, that sort of stuff. That's that's high on a lot of people's minds. We just want somebody to be thinking of us when they're when they're, you know, making their legislation and talking about the different things and watching over the bureaucrats. North belongs to the Northeast Missouri Conservative Club and supports U.S. House Representative Sam Graves. He says he trusts Graves is working for the people of the district, whether he's present or not. We don't see him much, you know, but, um, you know, we're, we're kind of up in the not-so-populated end of the district, and that's okay. But, uh, you know, we do hear from him. Uh, you know, we hear what he's trying to do in D.C., down the street from North's business, Michelle Hoosman organized the shelves of her store, the Mark Twain Book and Gift Shop. She says as a retired school teacher, her mind is always on funding for education. Hoosman, a Democrat, says Graves is out of touch with what communities need. When you call his office, you call to talk to him, um, you can't ever talk to him, you, you get a standard form letter back, you know, oh, thank you for calling, thank you for contacting me. When the Midwest Newsroom visited the 6th District two years ago, voters shared observations about Graves being hard to reach and rarely on the ground in the district. One voter said he couldn't remember the last time he saw Graves in his community. His primary opponents, while long shots, say they hear the same complaints. Freddie Griffin Jr. is a heavy machine operator from Marion. He says he's running against Graves because he feels the congressman has lost touch with the 6th District. I was in Rockport one night, which is just a few miles from his house. And that was a huge complaint, even right there in his own backyard. When we asked to interview Graves for this story, his congressional office directed us to his campaign office. No one from the Graves campaign responded to our request for an interview with a congressman. Graves' campaign website hasn't been updated since April 2020. Terry Smith is a political science professor at Columbia College in Missouri. He says Graves' dominance in the region and growing support of the Republican Party at the polls allows the congressman to spend most of his time in Washington. The stronger the district is for your party, uh, the less uh, essential it is to be uh, in the district all the time. Missouri State Representative Lewis Riggs represents Marion and Rawls County, which lie within the northeastern part of the 6th District. He says people put too much stock into Gray's physical presence in the district that stretches from the Kansas to the Illinois border. So I got 38,000 people I, I represent. Chances are at some time I'm going to see most of you, one, one way, shape, or another. You can't do that with a congressional district of almost 40 counties. It's physically impossible to accomplish that. Riggs say critics should look to Graves' record. 
he championed measures to boost commerce on the Mississippi River and improve the region's aging infrastructure. In August, Graves will face three primary opponents. Graves is heavily favored to win, but his challengers, including Freddie Griffin Jr. and Brandon Kleinmeier, say they hope they do just well enough to send a message to the congressman. Here's Kleinmeier. Some of the people I've talked to, they just want somebody that will answer them. You know, even if they don't like the answer, they don't want to be ignored. And they feel like they're being ignored right now. If Graves wins the primary as expected, he'll likely have another easy path against a Democratic opponent to secure his 12th term. For the Midwest Newsroom, I'm Kayvon Mansouri. The Midwest Newsroom is a collaboration between NPR and public radio stations in Iowa, Kansas, Missouri, and Nebraska. Missouri's first congressional district Democratic primary is one of the most contested races on Tuesday's ballot for St. Louis residents. St. Louis Public Radio's Jason Rosenbaum reports on the expensive and contentious showdown between Congresswoman Cori Bush and St. Louis County Prosecutor Wesley Bell. Let's get out here and work, guys. On a recent temperate Saturday morning at St. Ferdinand Park in Florissant, Bush is rallying her supporters to knock on doors in North St. Louis County. We won't let other people dictate what St. Louis is there you go. and who St. Louis is. We make St. Louis. Bush became a national figure after parlaying her status as a member of the Ferguson protest movement into a congressional seat. She slept on the Capitol steps to push for an eviction moratorium extension, and she's advocated for abortion rights and bolstered environmental programs. Now she's facing the fight of her political life in a Democratic primary that includes Bell and former state senator Maria Chappelle Nadal. And much of the focus is on how the candidates differ on Israel. Bell and Chappelle Nadal are defenders of the country's response to Hamas's October 7th attack. And Bell's campaign has benefited from millions of dollars worth of ads from pro-Israel groups. Bush is a longtime critic of Israel's treatment of Palestinians and the sponsor of a ceasefire resolution. I believe that making sure that there is safety for Israelis and Palestinians um, and there is a place where there is liberation and freedom for both is key. Bell says his campaign against Bush is broader than disagreement over Israel. He says Bush hasn't been an effective advocate for the region and adds he can bring people together to combat crime and find consensus on tough policy issues. The St. Louis region is not normal with all of our municipalities and all our cities. So that means you need someone who really is going to be deliberate and committed to working with our stakeholders. One of the paradoxes about the first congressional district contest is even though Bush and Bell's positions on Israel are playing a huge role in the fundraising and discourse in the campaign, what's happening in the Middle East is not top of mind for the largest group of first district voters, African-Americans. National polling shows Israel plays a small role in how African-Americans vote. That's probably why many of the pro-Bell ads from pro-Israel groups don't mention Israel, which is noticeable to Bush supporters like John Bowman. We understand that what Hamas did was an atrocity, but at the same time, we need a conquer congressperson who's not just representing the interests of the people who are funding their campaign. They have to be interested in all of our concerns, health care, education, economic inclusivity. Ferguson Mayor Ella Jones is supporting Bell. She says that Bell is responsive to the concerns of North St. Louis County, a heavily African-American part of the 1st Congressional District that's a critical battleground on August 6th. And every time there's something going on in Ferguson, you see Wesley. It's, if it's going on, something going on in Dale Wood, you see Wesley. He's visible. Meanwhile, Chappelle Nadal says she can be a better advocate than either major candidate. She says her state legislative experience will make her more effective in fighting crime and compensating St. Louisans who became sick because of radioactive waste exposure. I don't have the same bank as as my opponents, what I do know is that people are relying on me to tell uh, everyone what is important in this race. Tuesday's contest could show if voters gravitate toward Bell's leadership message around cooperation and consensus. And if Bush prevails, 
It could demonstrate that diverging from her Democratic colleagues is not an electoral liability, but a sign of independence and strength. I'm Jason Rosenbaum, St. Louis Public Radio. Our Fred Ehrlich edited that piece. We have more election coverage on stlpr.org. The Gateway is a production of St. Louis Public Radio, a listener-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Abby Larico, and from the St. Louis Public Radio Newsroom, this has been The Gateway.